Millennium Falcon Grand Ballroom. It's Miss Stephanie's house. Star Wars, nothing but Star Wars. Give me those Star Wars. Don't let them end. Guess what? They don't have to because there's three more coming. Star Wars, if they should bar wars, give us those Star Wars forevermore. How you guys feeling today? All right, we are live from our new secret location in Brooklyn. Um, this is our third season opener, first one in our new space. Um, we said goodbye to Donna. She moved to California. She's about to have a baby. We would like to welcome Edgardo. And we have a fabulous show today. We have Cian Gomez and Jessica Carbo here. Mateo Lane doing some comedy. So, real quickly, let me tell you a little bit about these wonderful people that are coming up. Sian and Jessica met through Arturo, not you, Castro, who's currently on Broad City, and through a series of random and fun events, they began to build an act together based on some of their solo material, collaborating on new material. Recently, one of their songs, a fan favorite, Fall For Me, was featured on NPR and is available for free download at www.jessicacarbo.com. Their soft, soulful, folk pop rock sound is fun, refreshing, moving, and contagious. They stop, strive to remain forever honest in their music making. They've been featured all over the city, and you can catch them this Tuesday at Mercury Lounge before a month-long tour on the West Coast. So, without further ado, I present Jessica Carbo and Sian Gomez. Saturday in a summer haze and a drunken maze when I first met you Remembered everything too, at least that's what I believe And I'm a girl of faith so I begin to pray, begin to pray that somebody like you Could fall in love with me too, so much that it's hard to breathe Oh no, I know, I know, oh no, no, oh no, I know, I know, I know, oh no, no. So let's reconnect, let me see what's next, let me see what three years to do. Cause I've been burned a bit to, but not to the third degree. And I'll take it slow, I don't know where to go, but I know how to let my heart back to you. See, I have made mistakes to the ones you don't want to repeat. Oh no, and no, and no, oh no, no, oh no. Oh 
Oh, okay. <laughs> it's getting closer. This is, uh... Oh, I think you'll figure out the title. I'm sipping on a cigarette, smoke cemented into my dreams. Get it away, or I'm running away. This black jacket, leather disguise reminds me why I'm in this place. Then I heard you say, I could never stay. Guy, grab. 
on the other side Still I had to see them both And I began to cry so high Now I'm calling all the astronauts Hold on to us you got, you got, you will only want what you got, you got, you got, you got, you got. Russian? What are you? You're Russian? So I'm performing to Russians who don't understand a word I'm saying and I'm pretty sure don't like gay people. So, you know, it feels really good. Um, how are you guys? Are you foreign? You sound like you have an accent. You know, I feel like a second I was like, well, he's wearing a hat. He's from Brooklyn talking about music. So I feel like, yeah, maybe you're, you know. Or are you just, you're not from? Where are you from? Lithuania. Okay, so I'm right. So you made me look stupid, and now you're from Lithuania, which is not here. So, you know, that's good. How long have you been in America for? A long, a long time? Do you, you don't like it? You sound like you don't like it. Okay, Russians, how long have you guys been here for? 25 years. 25 years, do you like it? Yeah, yeah. It's life, did you say? I, 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 I can't really tell, I was very Yeah. See, I have Italian family who are from Italy and they seem to always talk about the old country. You know what I mean? It's always like, in Italy, <laughs> why are we here then? <laughs> why did we come here? <laughs> and then I go back there and everyone's great and they're all tan, they look great, and everyone's eating great. I'm like, why the fuck did we go to Chicago? Can I swear? I mean, I'm going to. Okay. I'm doing a lot of crowd work, because do I, I don't know how to like follow a really cute girl and a black guy playing guitar, singing about Cray Cray, and then I come up here in skinny jeans with two Russians gambling in the back. Like, I have no idea what I'm doing here, you know? This is great. I love how, like, there was a show going on and you talk to the waiter, you're like, can you turn the TV down? He's like, but I need to watch or I'll cry. And you're like, just turn it off. I'm trying to do a show. <laughs> oh, God, you guys. Well, um, yeah, I mean, I do sing, you know. Thank you. <laughs> that was it. Just ten minutes of that. I, uh, I, what's her name who sings on the guitar? Who ran away, did not watch me perform. What? Oh, Jessica. Jessica. Jessica, she's got a good voice. I feel like, why don't people like her, why don't people on like The Voice and American Idol sound like her? Yeah. Do you know what I mean? She yeah, sounds good, good, you know? <laughs> All these other singers don't sound so good. I watch, who do they think is like my roommate? She DVR'd The Voice, and I had to be stuck with a full year of Christina Aguilera just screaming her head off, you know? And if you've ever watched that show, yeah. The Voice, right? She gives 
the worst advice, you know? Like, I, granted, she's supposed to be a good singer, but this is her advice. She walked up to two 19-year-old girls, and she was like, I just want to give you guys some advice before you go. Ha! I just want you to think about that. <laughs> well, that's not advice. <laughs> you know, hey Jessica. I feel like she's better than Brittany though, you know? Who was on X Factor, and Mariah, who was on American Idol. <laughs> what happened to Mariah? Do they like Mariah in Russia? I wouldn't know. You think she's too fat? <laughs> <laughs> I think she is, she looks terrible. She looks like 10 pounds of shit in a five pound bag. I think it's like she can dress however she wants to, but like, you know, you can't wear a napkin and have like a double D <laughs> bra size. You know what I mean? If you're gonna have a fuller body, dress for a fuller body. Don't dress for a 13 year old Puerto Rican girl who's on her way to the sock hop. <laughs> um, but you look great. You sound great, Jessica. I was making fun of Christina Aguilera, if you couldn't tell. Okay. Well, I'm glad you and I can be friends. Are you, do, what, did you study music? Like vocals? Vocally? What did you study? Classical? Classical? What's your voice position? Mezzo. You're a mezzo? Half? Do you know mezzo soprano just means half of the voice? <laughs> it doesn't really, like in Italian, it doesn't really mean anything. <laughs> it's true, I'm Italian. Like Italian, that the word mezzo soprano doesn't mean anything. Mezzo, like mettere, like middle, like to put. Yeah. So it's like the middle of the voice. Guys, this is a great comedy show. All right, All right I'll do bits. I'll stop doing crop work. Um, yeah. What do you think of airplane food? <laughs> Gross, I hate me. I have a mullet, by the way. <laughs> Just thought everyone should know. Russians, I got a mullet. Check it out. Uh, and camel toe, but if you don't know what that means, I'll explain it to you later. The guy in his suit might murder me, so this could be the last set of my life, you know? Um, also, I walked in here, I had no idea this was the show. I didn't, I had no idea. What part of Russia are you from? Are you from the east part? Or west part of Russia? South. South, but like south or southwest? Like, by China or by like Kazakhstan? Uh, southeast. Oh, southeast? Oh, okay. Do you speak a dialect or do you just speak normal Russian? No, normal Russian. Normal Russian? Okay. Well, I feel like we could be friends. <laughs> Guy in the suit? Not so sure. You? I feel like we could. Uh, for those of you at home, there's someone here who is gonna murder me. Um, I, uh, I, here's the thing is like, obviously I'm a homosexual. Another reason why you might want to kill me. Um, Cause in Russia, they're not really cool. You know, they hate gay people in Russia. <laughs> I'm pretty sure everywhere. <laughs> you know? I'm pretty sure if a boy even looks at the color pink, he's arrested. Um, but you know, we're here. Uh, and um, the thing is like with uh, gay people like yeah, I, I, not everyone likes gay people You know what I mean? I get that I get called faggot a lot, which is fine I also moved next to a high school. So that means I only get called faggot at like 9 a.m. and 3 p.m <laughs> It's like a really shitty UPS um, But I work with this woman who has no idea how to talk to gay people You know what I mean? Like I, I feel like to make herself comfortable She'll just bring up anything that I do and somehow make it about being gay even if it's not like I was getting coffee And she's like that's funny. You even stand in a gay way <laughs> All right, well then you stand like a cunt patty <laughs> I mean in her defense I was wearing a boa so You know <laughs> that's how I order coffee just oh, Man yeah, I don't know. I, uh, I, I don't have a TV anymore, so I moved out the roommate who watches The Voice. Uh, so now I just watch YouTube all the time, you know? And I wish I could be like that cool Brooklyn person who was like, I don't have a TV. <laughs> Do you know how people brag about that? You're like, did you ever see this show? Oh, I don't have a TV. It's like, fuck off. <laughs> you have an iPhone. <laughs> like, what do you sleep on a cloud? Um, so, you know. Uh, I don't have a TV, I watch YouTube. I feel like YouTube, I mean, that just, it's like a rabbit hole, isn't it? Like, you go down that rabbit hole with you. Yeah, it doesn't matter. Like, you can go on looking for one thing and then just, whoop, watch something else. Like, I went on looking for a pie recipe. Five minutes later, I'm watching South Korean women getting vicious plastic surgery. <laughs> and I don't know if you guys are aware of what's going on with these Korean women and they're getting this, like, they're not even going into, like, a nose job. They're getting, like, 
forehead implants and their jaws sawn off. It's pretty <laughs> fucked up. Uh, and I'm watching this 19-year-old girl walk into her doctor's office, right? And he's putting blue marker all over her face where he's gonna cut her up. And I'm screaming at my computer. I'm like, stop this, you don't have to do this, just be yourself. Then I saw her after the surgery. I'm like, she looks great. <laughs> <laughs> she looks great. <laughs> Uh, I look like a real misogynist pig up here, don't I? No. You don't think so? I'm gay, I get away with it. <laughs> I'm gay and part Mexican and I'm Italian, so I get away with it, you know? Do I get away with it? Yeah. There's a black woman here, I feel like you, you'll be the judge of anything, you know? <laughs> you're a black woman, like, you're gonna be the judge of all discrimination. <laughs> Are you a lesbian? No. Okay, well, if you were a lesbian, I would crown you. You know what I mean? I don't know. I feel like black women and gay men are just turning into the same thing. Yeah, you don't have any gay friends? You haven't noticed this? Like, my roommate's a black woman, and we're the same thing. I don't know how it happened, you know? Like, they, like I'll call my like, gay friends, I'll be like, hey, what's going on? I'll be like, hey, girl! I'm like, no, no, your name's Tim. And, like, you can't talk that way, you know? I feel like if you were blind walking through Chelsea, which is like, you know, the gay neighborhood, at like 2 o'clock in the morning on a Saturday, you'd be like, why are there so many horny black women? <laughs> um, that's the guy who's gonna cry. You were gonna cry, weren't you? Like, please don't turn off because I cry. How long have you been here, waiter? Uh, two years. Two years? Two years. Do you like America? Almost. Almost? But you don't want to go back. I'm not sure about it. Eh. I feel like Russian people, it's a lot about like clubs and dressing a really weird way. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? <laughs> oh, but he's got he's gotta work. <laughs> uh, this is pretty glamorous. Um, I don't know. I um what does that mean? Did I go to ten minutes? I just did ten minutes of making fun of Christina and Mariah and then making berating Russian people. I got five more minutes? Okay, that's plenty of time. Um, well, I guess we can talk more about minorities. I enjoy that. <laughs> I'm a minority, I don't care. You know, I'm a double minority, actually. Gay and uh, Mexican. Although I don't look brown enough, so people don't believe me when I tell them that I'm Mexican. That's okay, not every, there's like Koreans in Mexico, you know, getting plastic surgery. <laughs> Um, I am, uh, I, so yeah, like my name is Mateo, which is pretty ethnic, and I feel like people, you know, they like, they don't really understand that. Like I went into Starbucks, you know sometimes at Starbucks you walk in and they'll write your name on the back of the cup, because they're so busy with coffee. So I walk in and the lady asks for my name and I say Mateo. She turns around, makes my drink, she comes back, it says potato. <laughs> Let's review. <laughs> this woman thought that I confidently told her, I'd like a grand Americana, please. Potato. <laughs> With a P. Bunch of idiots who work here. <laughs> like my mom's a poor man's Gwyneth Paltrow. Okay, not a good joke. <laughs> Do you guys get it? She named her kid Apple? Oh, yeah, yeah. Thanks, alright. <laughs> I feel like uh, I'm the only gay in like the 50 mile radius right now. Not as gay as these lamps, but... Getting there. I like this Russian guy. I feel like we could be friends, you know, with the comfort of other people. Okay. <laughs> Should I sing more? Yeah, because I, are you an opera singer? I am. What did you study? Uh, Rock City University. And are you a soprano? I'm a soprano. You're a soprano, are you a, like, what kind of soprano? Oh, like, Mariah Carey. <laughs> <laughs> That's Mariah Carey. Wow. Yeah, remember Mariah Carey? She used to be the... Wow. Guys! Just that out of that? I know, I have a large range. I'm a bass. Wow. Yeah. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gay! 
So. I mean, they don't know what's happening right now. <laughs> I mean, this is difficult enough for the group here to understand what's happening, but they are like, you yeah, know, <laughs> we are packing our bags and taking the next flight back to Russia. Did you not, did you not like my high notes? <laughs> it was what? Oh, okay. Did you want to hear more? <laughs> you want to hear more? Oh, yeah. You know. Was that the song she sang? Loving you. That's pretty good, right? Other singer? Okay. Are you Florida or is this the gayest thing you've ever seen? Both. <laughs> Both. <laughs> it's, pretty, it's pretty gay, right? Yeah. I don't know how that happened. My voice teacher thought I was crazy. My voice teacher literally thought I was insane. <laughs> but I would sing, like the thing is my voice is so, goes, dips so low that I would sing a lot of like, not Negro spirituals, but like African American like songs, you know? <laughs> like you'd like walk by the room and I'm like, make them hear you. And it's like a 15 year old white kid. <laughs> I'm singing about free me. <laughs> but it was the only songs that fit my voice, you know? There's like those big, big voice guys. Do you not like this? I don't know. I feel like we had, we were in the connection and I probably said something that made you not like me. Okay, well I like you too. Oh, I love you too. I'm very, you know, I'm having a difficult problem with uh, closeness, so I love you too. I don't have a difficult problem with closeness. I'm Italian. <laughs> I'm Italian and gay, so I was born with too many opinions, you know? Just too many. Um, but yeah, I feel like this is fun. I mean, anyway, I can't just do like my normal bits, you know? I feel like this is more fun to talk to the crowd. Okay, well, maybe one more high note, and then you want to do our thing? <clears throat> I'm just kidding. I love that Mariah Carey made a career out of that. You know what I mean? It's like boobs and high note. That's it. She did Mariah. Carey, I don't know, but you gotta hit a higher note. I have no idea. Like Mariah Carey gets on stage and it's the same thing every time. Some black rapper runs up on stage and then she goes. Eh. You know she does whispering stuff. She do whisper belt high note. So. Eh. And then he raps. <laughs> and that's every Mariah Carey song, isn't it? Yeah, and then she does it over and over again. She's like, why am I not getting any more hits? I'm like, because you look ridiculous. <laughs> Sing an actual song. Oh. It's too much, yeah. You know what, we'll end on that. Okay. <laughs> Thanks, guys. What do you want me to do? Where do you want me to go? Okay. We're gonna do an interview. Yes, please. Sure. Okay. Is this my Inside the Actors Studio moment? Where I tell you that I'm about to go perform at the Papaya Stand at 6th Avenue? Yeah. Nice. If it's a gig, I'll do it. <laughs> yeah. oh, okay. I wish I could sing with them, you know, sometime. Well, maybe. Yeah, I should, yeah. This is exactly what you were looking for in your app. I think if you just said Some gay guy who sings into the stratosphere? Okay. Stratosphere. Um, actually, so I want to know, were you, were you born in Italy or were you born in Chicago? In Chicago. You were born in Chicago. Yeah, yeah. My so, dad's American. He's like white and boring. <laughs> he is. There's such a huge difference between ethnic families and non-ethnic families. Like my mom is Italian, Mexican, my dad's just white. And it's like, we, my mom's family, like, I have 22 first cousins. We all grew up a block away from each other. My grandparents think it's okay to call me four times a week. And then my dad's family's like, hello. And that's as close as you get to them. You know, they're just white and boring. <laughs> that's all I can say about them. Yeah. I feel you. So, um, how did your interest in music begin? Uh, I'm gay. <laughs> D done. <laughs> I used to actually, when I was a little kid, my favorite movie was Sleeping Beauty. The, and I used to sing to the birds, like Sleeping Beauty. My mom had to tell me to stop because our neighbors were like, there's a woman singing in your backyard. Like, I would go in the backyard and I'd be like, ah! every day. Yeah. Well, you know, sounds cute, but 
I don't know what part of Chicago you're in, but you're lucky you're here right now. Right? I'm here right now. But I used to do that every single day. I used to go and sing to them. <laughs> well, you know. I mean, it's so beautiful that I got called faggot a lot when I was 13, you know? So the singing stopped. But yeah, I, si I started singing. It's okay, guys. Don't worry about it. Um, I started singing with a teacher. Like, I started studying opera when I was, like, 15, 16. I studied privately, yeah, with this guy. He taught me how to breathe and stuff. And there, so you continued your um, classical training in Italy as well? Oh, yeah, I, I went to Italy there. to paint. So I'm a painter. My job right now is I'm a storyboard artist, so I illustrate TV commercials for a living. And I do fashion illustrations for like ads and all that other kind of stuff. So I studied oil painting a la prima method in Italy. Is there anything you don't do? Yeah, yeah I can't get a boyfriend and get my dick sucked if I try it. <laughs> so, you know, and I cannot play sports and I don't know math, you know? And I have a mullet. So, you know, there's a lot that I'm doing wrong. Mostly everything I just said, I'm doing wrong. <laughs> so, yeah, there's a lot I don't do. But so, if it's artistic, then I feel I can kind of do it, you know? Yeah. So what made you decide to become a comedian? Um, before I was doing comedy, I was trying to uh, perform... Hello, people. This is what a gay person looks like. Um, <laughs> they've never seen one. Um, or just look at the lamp. Uh, I... <laughs> I was trying to, um, <laughs> I was trying to perform, and uh, I joined a cabaret group, and it was, it consisted of drag queens and uh, dancers, and I was a singer, and we would go to local gay strip clubs in Chicago, and uh, I would sing Barbara Streisand music, and then a Polish stripper would come on after. So I was like, well, I have to stop this, this is awful, and uh, I did an open mic to do stand-up, and I was like, well, this is very glamorous. Nice. Because there wasn't some guy J-O-ing in a corner before he goes up on stage. Jacking off. He had to get hard so the old men, you know, they, the old men threw peanuts at me because they're like, Stop singing! <laughs> Show us your dick! I'm like, I just want to perform. So, it was, a, it was a weird, weird, you know, but now I'm here in some weird Russian dance hall, you know, talking about gays. So, you know, I'm still doing weird fun shows. But this is more fun than drag queens. I hate drag queens. <laughs> We're the worst. drag queens next week. <laughs> are you? Well, enjoy. You better get a trailer for them because they are real cunty. <laughs> Thanks for the heads up. Yeah, <laughs> just letting you know. So we always like to ask a couple questions to really get into the mind of the artist and how what motivates you and keeps you going. Okay. So we have some very hard questions. Mm -hmm. I would like you to pick. We're gonna do three of them. Just do them all three. But you get to pick a number between one and 17. Okay. Right now? Right now. Four. Four. Were there any books that inspired you or any people that inspired you along the way? Um, well, yeah, tons of people. Not so much books. Reading is just the worst. Um, no, I... Everything's a movie, isn't it? <laughs> um, well, people or books, that's different. Which one? You gotta choose. You gotta choose whatever inspires you more. Books, probably Calvin and Hobbes. And, um, yeah, X-Men comic books. That I connected with, actually, a lot. Is that where your hair came from? Uh, my hair came from some lesbian's <laughs> wet dream. Uh, people, I'm inspired by, like, outside, like, people I know personally or, like, famous people. You. Maria Callas, Howard Stern, and Christopher Hitchens, and John Waters. Yeah. Those are my biggest influences. Yeah. Those are good ones. Mm -hmm. um, pick another number. Um, Twelve. Name something that you did. I'm sorry. Name something you did that you considered a failure. This haircut. <laughs> what did you learn from it? Nothing. Do you still consider it a failure? Something that I did that I consider a failure? Um, well, joining Grindr for a little bit was a bad idea. I feel like that's a real failure. Do you know what Grindr is, you guys? You do? Yeah. It's real bad. Because it's like a step above tapping underneath a bathroom stall. I mean, it's disgusting, you know? And men are really sexually aggressive and mean. They're not very nice, you know? They want to know what your asshole looks like before your name. So, I feel like that's a failure. Well, uh, you know, it's what gays do. I haven't had sex since December, though, so it's been a while. If there's like a Latino man between the ages of 22 and 28, 
with a nice bod? Let me know. Um, I am on Tinder, and I turn into this like Victorian queen on Tinder. I just sit there in my bed, I'm like, no, 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 Fine. And then I never talk to him. Jaded. Have you tried jaded? Well, no. I'm, you know, I'm not Jewish, so. I don't think half the people on that site are. Really? So there's just people on there? What if there's like someone not Jewish who's looking for Jews but then finds another not Jewish black person? Black Planet. Christian singers. And then like, Black Planet? Them? What would I do on Black Planet? Is that what one's called? Like, looking to the black to people. Is there one called right Black now? Planet? Yes. Yeah. That's, that was before MySpace, yeah. I think. Oh. Do your homework, children. Yeah, well, I don't discriminate. I like all different ethnicities, That's why you so I don't give a shit. One. Including, well, yeah. All right, go on, let's move on. All right, next question. So these are my own personal questions. Oh, great. Um, so choose a number one through nine. Oh, you just pick. Well, right. What do you think is the most interesting based off my ridiculous answers? If you were in a reality show, what would it be called? Faggots are us with a backwards R like Toys R Us. <laughs> and I'm gonna just ask another one because I asked this other one. Okay. If you were an element on the periodic table, which one would you be? Oxygen, because it's the only one I know. <laughs> <laughs> they, just, um, they just discovered a new one, by the way. There, used to, there was 117 items on the periodic table. It's now 118. Woo. That's a fact. Check it up. Science. <laughs> I don't do well with science. What? Listen, Lithuania. <laughs> you need to relax, sir. All right? You're getting a little too loose. <laughs> One more cider for the guy in the front row. Does anybody yeah. have any questions for Mateo? Anyone? 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 What is, what is your greatest ambition in life? I don't know. To... For the next 10 years. My ambition? I guess to keep performing. I know that doesn't sound... There's no real... Just to keep performing regularly and make a living off of it. And the second part of that question, what would success mean to you? Um, I don't know. I, um, it changes every day. Pro uh, probably just performing and, and having a sense of security in that. Keep creating, keep performing, keep moving. Don't get bored with myself because that's... Keep on moving, don't stop. Kind of like that. Yeah. <laughs> I get bored easily, so I don't want to ever get bored. I don't, I don't like the idea of that. Yeah, that's probably that. That, that wasn't a very funny answer, but... You don't have to be funny all the time. I know, well, I'm in a Russian place. Of course I have to be serious. Hello. Da. Niet. Do svidanya. Ne. So, do you have a website? No, uh, yeah, I do have an art website. You can see all my artwork at mattlaneart.com. Mattlaneart.com. So you're heading off to Caroline's. Any other shows you have coming up that you want to let everyone in the world know? So we have um, audience across. I have I have a lot of shows. I'm gonna go do a taping for Comedy Central next week. So that's wow. exciting. That's pretty awesome. Yay. I'm excited. So that'll cool. be fun. So and um, Caroline's tonight. So if you leave here. Be there. I'll be square. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Well, hopefully we will have you see you again soon. Yeah, that'd be fun. Thank you Thanks, guys. You're a fun audience, actually. Bye. Thanks. Okay, guys. I hope you don't have to run off very, very. I got. Times are hard here on the Millennium Falcon. <laughs> cookies here. Get your cookies. I was a princess once, but now I'm selling cookies. I should have never left the Girl Scouts, because honey, I'd have been a billionaire. <laughs> Hello there, can I get you a cookie? Sir, can I get you a cookie? Would you like Darth Vader, a Stormtrooper, or Yoda? Thank you. There's a big kitchen on the Millennium Falcon. You still got it. You know it, son. What, you don't want your own? You can have your own. Going once, going twice, you don't take one now, you're not getting one. Help yourself. Yes, Mateo, you're going to need this. You're going on stage. You need to get your sugar, right? 
All right, you can leave a tip in my jar on the way out. Times are hard here. This is Brooklyn, son. Do you want one? You're not going to eat my cookie? Of course not. Cast her off. Where's Darth Vader? These are good. All right, you know what? I'm going to be leave them here. Do you want one? Do you want your own? You should take a picture of them. We've taken it to my It's well documented. I just want to remind everybody that they can find us always at www.missstephaniesHouse.com. You can go and you can watch some of our shows in the archive. You can also find some of the recipes of things that I make. And there's also a lot of groovy pictures of all the artists that have been on here. So we want to thank Cub Cause for letting us have our show here. Thank you. Um, I want to thank you all who are just here randomly and you're like, oh, crap. No, but we have some good music coming up, so you chose a good day to come. Um, thank you again to Mateo Lane. I hope your set kills tonight. Thank you. I know Will. Um, thank you. Ciao, ciao, darling. The video will be up online. And I want to thank you all for coming out. I'm just happy that I don't have to put my bed back on tonight. <laughs> so. Did you chew? Did you swallow? I don't want you to choke up here. <laughs> that sounded really bad, but since they were standing behind me, you saw them eat the cookie, you cannot misinterpret what I just saw. <laughs> <laughs> All right, y'all. I'm going to let them take it away. Mateo, Mateo, we need to be friends. <laughs> Jolene, 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 Jolene I'm begging of you, please don't take my man Jolene, 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 Jolene Oh, please don't take him just because you Your beauty's beyond compare with flaming locks of auburn hair and ivory skin and eyes of emerald green. Your voice is like a breath of spring, your mouth is like summer rain, and I cannot compete with you, Jolie. And I can easily understand. How you could easily take my man, but you don't know what he means to me, Jolene. He talks to me in his sleep at night. I'm crying when he calls your name, Jolene. Those cookies, they got me all messed up. Jolene, 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 Jolene. Jolene, 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 please don't take him just because you called Tar Beach. Uh, we actually, I was working in real estate full time not too long ago, and um, Sion came to me with this with this riff. It was at a time where I was contemplating quitting and um, just kind of thinking about all these options that I had, and all the struggles that you that you have when you're living two completely different lives. And uh, we uh, wrote this song on the roof of my apartment building which is often called the Tar Beach in uh, Manhattan, so it's about that. Hi. 
I'm not the one who needs to find myself Though I love it, I will not save up to buy Chanel Cause I already live beside Fifth Avenue It isn't bad enough for you I'm so happy owning part of this star beach Just an elevator ride, three flights of stairs for me this is where I go to write a song or two Is it bad enough for you? And now I'm working hard to be so free Oh, and all I need for you to believe in Too easily I tumble toward the daily grind But living nine to five I fear my state of mind Now I'm changing my direction and my point of view Isn't that enough for you? We're dreaming of a life without creative ties That steady pace and paycheck lack enough surprises like this would do it is not enough for me or you and i'm working hard to be so So Stephanie, it's your turn. Da, 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 da. Cool. 
tables and now you are the light, the light you are, you are, you are, you are, you are, you are the light, the light, the light you are, you are, you are the light. I was cold down and out, but now go run dry, your skin and bones all alone in the all the honey, money, milk, and wine could never cure me in this witness. The second chance is I always believe. You will stay away when life is at stake. I always believe. Yeah. 
with a wink of him happily And even if you go, I will know You can fall for me, fall for me, fall, fall 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 Fall for me
Yeah, I was a really, really shy kid, and I found Thanks, out Mike. that I could sing through a course teacher, well, and, um, course, right? and I started cracking jokes in class. I wasn't really funny, but um, <laughs> I started doing that anyway, and it, that's kind of, it broke me out of my shell, and it's kind of just been my, my comfort and passion since, yeah. Good. Um, do you have any, who are some of your musical influences? Because you have, you kind of like cover a lot of different things, like I'm sitting there listening, and I'm like, oh, that sounds like this, and then, you know, I go somewhere else, so I kind of feel like it might be a wide spectrum, especially between both of you all. Um, recently, uh, Just say Mariah Carey, it's okay. <laughs> Um, I listen to uh, Jose Gonzalez a lot. He does a lot of uh, yeah. finger picking work. Yeah. Uh, Mr. John Hurt, I'm really into. I try to incorporate a lot of that. And African Suku's guitar, actually. I influences a ton of what I write. Um, and what else? What was it? What else? Did you have? Your musical influences are um, artists. David Gilmour, Hendrix. Uh, the classics. Classics. Um, and Kurt Cobain, I mean, he just writes. Simple things and uh, translates really well. So. Absolutely. Um, yeah, I guess a lot of jazz, like a lot of Ella Fitzgerald, Billie Holiday. Good answer for being on Blue Note Records. Just <laughs> <laughs> right. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I guess Nora Jones. Um, I'm inspired a lot by Sarah Bareilles and um, God, a whole lot of different people, like Randy Newman's writing. Um, been listening to a lot of Saint Vincent lately. I think she's really cool. <laughs> she's great. She's sick. I don't do anything like her, but I've been listening to her. Um, <laughs> That's good. Get your mind going in other yeah, direction. I listen to like a lot of yeah, a lot of old stuff. Yeah. So if you guys could open for any band, like your dream band, who would it be? Is oh, it going to be? Yes. As a as a group. <laughs> Got it right here. Oh, yeah. These are these are these are all right. So. <laughs> no, as it as, could be as, as a group. group. Okay. Um, Mariah Carey, pass the mic. <laughs> I don't know. Right now, let's see. Um, I mean, Radiohead. I mean, who would want to open for Radiohead? Radiohead. She doesn't want to. <laughs> If I say it differently, will it still count as my own unique Radio idea? Radiohead. <laughs> Radiohead. Um, um, God, I don't. I don't know. That's tough. We were not really going with Celine Dion. That was a good. No. Okay. I mean, <laughs> but we can. Celine Dion. <laughs> She's a legend. She might. You guys might be opening for her in Vegas, but that's okay, <laughs> right? No, um, yeah. Cool. So what was the first instrument you picked up? Um, for me, it was piano. And then I tried guitar, gave up. Because um, I have really tiny hands. Yeah, and um, that's why you're playing ukulele. Well, yeah, they would like shake. But that's a, that's a poor excuse. So I picked up the ukulele and now I picked up the guitar. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Um, you said you started on piano. I Start taking lessons on piano. Right. Recorder, I started playing first. Actually, I tried out for a choir, and I like they denied me because I couldn't sing. So, yeah, it sorry. keeps you out of the choir. Yeah. Sian, so, yeah, I'm sorry, but we can talk about that after the show. So I feel like that affected you. <laughs> um. So now it's time for our very hard questions. So we can delve into the mind of the artist and see what makes you tick. So, you can each pick a question between 1 and 18. And you can pick the same ones with Mateo, or you can pick different ones. Uh, I'm going to go with 5. Ooh, really? Uh, no. Okay. Well, that's a good one. You pick 4. Yeah, no. You're right. We're going with 5. Do you have someone that you consider a mentor, and how did you meet them? Ugh. Um, a mentor. Well, not necessarily a mentor, but I, I really look up to him as a guitar player and, well, yeah, it's a little bit of a mentor. The guy, the first guy actually emailed ever on Craigslist looking for guitar lessons. Dan Turned Smith. <laughs> not Dan Smith, actually. Wow. <laughs> um, this guy, Luca Benedetti, he, um, he's, he's been playing in New York for like ever. 
and plays with a ton of people. But um, he really showed me to just, I was like really keen on progressing and I was like really frustrated that I couldn't shred, you know, on guitar. But um, he told me to like just be patient and, um, you know, he'll come and practice. So. Look at you one month later after. And then one month after starting guitar. <laughs> <laughs> when you were 20. When was it? When was this? Uh, I was 20. No, he's I 21. am 22. <laughs> oh, no, 30, 30, 30. Very close to AARP. <laughs> Free coffee at McDonald's. <laughs> so I think I'm going to know that or not. No, you can answer the same one. Do you want me to repeat the question? Do you have someone you consider a mentor and how did you meet them? Oh, um, I have, like, I don't know, I have a couple of different mentors, I guess. That's um, good. I guess it's, um, me, ugh. Musically, I feel like I've, I've had mentors growing up, like for all different spectrums, like classical and choir. Um, like, I feel like these guys, like my band sometimes, become sure. my mentors. Yeah, musically so now. No, really, because we work so closely together and it's so, it's so easy to start second guessing yourself because you're always looking for validation, right? Um, but the people that you work closely with see your progress more than, you know, so sure. closely and intimately than more than anybody else. And they know the in, ins and outs. So really, they, they've become my mentors in the past couple of years. In terms of like making this a career, they're, you know, Ian Ralphini over Bruno, um, uh, the producer of the Sing Off, who's like been there. You know, there's a lot of people who, you know, say they believe in you and who have seen a, a lot of things. So it, that, that really, you know, propels you forward. Absolutely, yeah. encouragement always helps. Um, do you want to pick the second number? I'm going to go with uh, seven. Did help ever come to you in surprising ways? Did help ever come to you in surprising ways? Uh, help. I need somebody. Sorry. <laughs> it's a beautiful song. <laughs> help, help, help. Um, surprising. I don't know. It's a tough question. <laughs> Oh, yeah, actually, um, so the first um, record that I recorded, first album that I recorded, um, with my buddy Jason, we did it pretty much in his home studio, you know, and we recorded, I mean, pretty much everything ourselves, you know, just two of, it, just two of us, and we were like, all right, let's see what happens, and so we just emailed a ton of blogs, um, and just like music websites or whatever. And this guy, Russell, is this guy, Julian, who um, is the founder of Laidback Radio, um, got a hold of it, and he... Your first album? You first thing I ever did. Oh. It's, um, and then um, he, this guy, Julian, um, emailed us, and he was like, hey, I got this guy, this French guy, um, in Philly, he wants to come down and do a piece on you. Just randomly, I mean, this guy is awesome, he's so cool. And we didn't have to pay for anything. We came in, we rented a space out for us. Um, we put on like um, this huge piece about us on Layback Radio. And ever since then, Layback has just been huge just in terms of just getting, you know, giving us support and like getting our stuff out. It's amazing. And I made so many connections across Europe because of this one guy. So yeah, I was just super, super cool. That's awesome. You're gonna have many more after the show too. <laughs> Wait on a minute. Um, for me, it's been always been right when I was about to hit, I don't want to say rock bottom. <laughs> there's always lower you can oh, go. There's always, yeah, there's always lower you can go, but there's always, you know, those times where you're like, what am I doing? I thought I completely knew. Um, and so for me. Life of an artist, uh, right? Up right? And down. But I think it's like right at that moment when you're just so ready to receive the good things. It's, it's when they happen, it's like when you're just kind of like, oh, shit, I can't, like, I can't take this anymore, right. like, so for, for me, I guess, it was like, after my, it was six months out of voice surgery, I was allowed to start singing again, and I was, you know, breaking up with a boyfriend, yada, yada, and I was like, no screw one. this, I went on backstage, I went on a friend's, a friend's account of backstage.com, I didn't even have an account, because I, I couldn't really sing it, and didn't have any money, so I went on Backstage.com and I saw the ad for Bellarios for an Italian-American singing group and I was like, I'm Italian-American, I can sing, what's up? I'm kind of sing right now, I sound like Minnie Mouse. 
And um, that's what we were looking for. They were looking for an Italian American emails. <laughs> Ciao. Um, and so submitting for that, and, and also in the meantime, I had like uploaded some YouTube videos for like the first time of things I had been working on while, uh, while I couldn't sing. And I was just kind of putting it all out there. And I found out that that was part of the reason why I was actually invited in the first place. So it was because I had just like kind of purged all this stuff and put it online. Yeah. And so I was asked to do that, and then I, I kind of just got my first introduction into the music business right into Blue Note Records, which as a kid growing up, I was like, I think if I want to sing, I want to be in Blue Note Records, like not knowing a damn thing, you know? And so that was kind of like a huge introduction into everything, a huge lesson. And then as that was kind of unraveling, um, and I was kind of in a similar situation, um, my college a cappella group was asked to do uh, MBC as a sing-off. And another video of, of kind of when I was in another one of those moments, just graduating from college, a, a video of, of me singing Feels Like Home kind of got me invited to do the show. So I, I truly believe for everyone out there, it's like miracles are waiting to happen. You just need to be like ready to receive them. That's so true. Not to be all spiritual on you. I wish Mateo was here. He'd probably just make fun of me. Let's all right now. Let's all hold hands. Let's all hold hands and go kumbaya and then Fire up the Awesome. Yeah. Are they? Did you have one more? No, I'm not. Okay. Well, I have one last question for you. Okay. You answered that. Did you answer? No, I didn't answer. Sorry. I was just thinking that was not intentional. I spoke for you 20 years ago. Yeah, right. How do we execute someone from the audience? Just like. Ejecto C. Ejecto C. That's on the next episode. Please come. <laughs> did you forget the question? Um, no. Did um, it help ever come to you to surprising like Oh, yeah, I did. I answered that one. You had oh, one that's more. what I thought. Yeah. See? I was just kidding about all that when you talk. <laughs> um, okay, so this is a very important question, and this, these are my own personal questions. What is your pin number? Just kidding. Um, <laughs> if you could build your dream sandwich, like this is like the ultimate sandwich. What would be on it? Okay, let me preface this by saying I would not eat this. <laughs> but like my younger me would. Are you on paleo? <laughs> I take the bread away. No, my younger me would eat this. It would be salami. Wait, so what kind of bread would it be? It would be Italian bread toasted. Of course. Of course, Italian bread toasted with salami, provolone, smoked gouda, maybe some waffle fries on top. And a little bit of olive oil. I don't know, too much. Maybe a splash of balsamic on A little there. balsamic. Um, that's all I have for now. That yeah. sounds good. Without the meat, of course. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't know. No selfish. I'm not a huge sandwich guy. I, I, I ate a Philly cheesesteak for the first time. I went to Pat's. Oh, good. Delicious. Really? Because I feel like they use like. I mean, cheese on yeah, okay, I don't so, think that's yeah. really gross to me. I mean, it was delicious. I mean, I, I, this guy, I'll my buddy, <laughs> I was not drunk. We had a show at World Cafe, and we drove out there, and we were like, we have to get cheesesteaks, so. Of course. That's what we you did. have to get that when you're in um, Philly. Favorite? I mean, right now? Or like, like, I don't know, where are the other? I like tuna on sourdough. Sorry. If I had known I'm that sorry. the other day. Very achievable. You can do this. You know, yeah, you aim low and then everything happened. Right? That was it. So those weren't too hard, you guys. No. That was all done. So we're going to set up. We have a song for you guys. Like I said, this is Miss Stephanie's house. At our new secret location. Don't tell her it is, you guys. We'll be bombarded. Um... Next month, we have an amazing show. Jason Trappenberg will be here. And um, some of you all know him, some of you all don't, but I do implore you to tune in because he's amazing. Um, once again, I also want to give a shout out to Alia Fives. She did our logo. She should be here one of these days. And um, just a big thank you to Edgardo and Micah and all you guys for coming out. You guys rock. And um, we will see you soon, and we're going to go out with a good little song here. You ready, y'all? I am. I a trap. I can't walk out. Because I love you too much.
Yeah. 